it's just after 5.30 on a Saturday morning. Perfect time to record a video. In this video, we're going to take a look at this temperature controlled nightlight that I built using an Arduino. A friend of mine recently came to me and showed me a product that changed colour based on the temperature of a child's room and asked could we build the same thing using an Arduino. And it's actually a great Arduino project because it only uses a couple of components and the code for it's really simple. One thing that's going to be a little bit different about this video is I want to talk through the thought process behind the different sensors that were picked and just some of the design decisions around that. We can kind of split the project into three different things. The platform is the type of Arduino that the project is running on. The light is what light we're going to change the color and then temperature is how we're going to read the temperature. So the first idea for the light was to use a NeoPixel ring similar to the wedding lights project but because this was for a kids room the glass phase we used for the wedding light project would not be a good solution for that so instead we used one of these off-the-shelf kids lights that you can get on Amazon for really cheap and they have an IR remote and we can control that pretty simply using the Arduino. For temperature, originally we thought about using the sensors that come with starter kits such as the DHT11 and the DHT22, but a lot of people say that they're not that accurate, so instead we decided to use the BME280 sensor. Finally, for the type of Arduino we're going to use, realistically we could use any Arduino, an Uno, an ESP32, or even an Atini would work fine. But the reason I chose the D1 Mini or the ESP8266 is because that's what I always choose for projects. There's nothing limiting about this project that would make me need to choose one of these other ones, such as if I needed a lot of pins, maybe the Uno would be a good one, or if it was running on battery, I might use the Atini. But the other thing as well is just the simple version of this project is just temperature is red and it controls the light, but maybe in the future you might want to control the light using your phone, or maybe send notifications if the temperature drops below a certain value. Before we move on to building the project, I just really need to give a warning around the safety element of this for your children. So there's nothing unsafe about this project, but you should not be relying on something you made with the cheapest Chinese components for the safety of your child. So it is a nice indicator if the room is too warm or whatever, but do not completely rely on it. You need to go in and check. Let's take a look at the parts and circuits that we need for this project. I'm using a Wemos D1 Mini as my ESP8266. I'm using a BME280 temperature sensor. This is a four pin one. I've seen some with more pins, but that's just the one I have. I'm using an IR receiver that I got from a kit. You can also buy these individually from AliExpress. They're pretty cheap. For the sending part of the circuit, I'm using an NPM transistor and an IR LED. I have in the past had some problems with cheaper IR LEDs, so this one is a little bit more expensive, but it seems to work better. The reason I'm using the transistor is because a GPIO pin won't have enough power to power it on its own. Next, we'll move on to the code. You can find this sketch on my GitHub page, and it's linked below. So the first thing we need to do is install some libraries that we're going to use for this example. So the IR Remote ESP8266 is a library for sending and receiving the IR commands using an ESP8266. You can just search on the library manager for IR Remote ESP8266. The next thing we need is a library for reading the temperature sensor. So I'm using the Adafruit BME2080 library. So again, you can just search for BME2080 on the library manager and install the one by Adafruit. You will also need to install the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library. They use this as kind of a base of some of their sensor libraries. Again, just open the Library Manager and search for Unified Sensor. When you're using a library for the first time, I definitely recommend checking out the examples it ships with. So under File, Examples, you'll see the new libraries that you've just installed and you should check out the examples. So for the Adafruit BME2080, there's a BME2080 test. That sounds pretty good. The examples usually have some information about how you should configure it or the different settings available for the different sensors and the libraries. The other thing that's good about it is you can quickly rule out that you've an issue with the sensor, that you've it wired correctly, because if the example doesn't work, you're probably going to have a hard time getting something custom working. 
The next thing I did was got a list of all the commands that my remote can send. So I did this by going to File, Examples, IR Remote ESP8266 and opening the IR Receive Dump V2. The only thing I needed to change in this example sketch was I needed to change the receive pin, so I'm using D5. Once it's uploaded, you can open the serial monitor. And now when you press a button on the remote control, you'll see a data dump come out. So the important bits of information we need from this is the encoding type, the code, and then how many bits there are. I'd recommend recording each command twice and making sure that the two of them match up because sometimes it doesn't work out as you expect. If your encoding is not NEC, check out the examples that come with the IR ESP8266 remote library and see do you have one that's closer to it. Back in the sketch, let's go through the setup. So most of this is taken from examples from the two libraries. One thing that is different is the Adafruit sensor has a default address of 0x77, but the one that comes from AliExpress has a default address of 0x76, so you need to just pass in the correct address in the bme.begin. The loop is really straightforward. All that happens is it reads the temperature from the BME and it prints it to the serial monitor. It checks if the temperature is above the max temp, which was set earlier on, and if it is, it sends the command to make the light red. If it's below the min temp, it sends the command to make the light blue, and if it's neither of those things, it just sets it to be green. And it doesn't need to do this all the time, so there's a delay of two seconds, but realistically this could be higher, but if it's not running on battery, you don't really have any concern about how often it runs. I'd be really interested in your feedback on what you thought about this style of video, so it's a little bit different, but I wanted to give a little bit more detail around why I picked certain sensors or why I did things certain ways, and also give some advice around the steps I would take to do this type of a project. I also want to give a massive shout out to my GitHub supporters. For people who don't know, GitHub recently launched a kind of equivalent to Patreon, and people have been sponsoring me and I just want to say I'm really appreciative of this and thank you. I've been about 30 minutes recording this section here because I kind of don't know what to say. I've never even asked people to sub before so it feels really weird to ask people to sponsor but people have asked for it in the past and yeah. So if you'd like to sponsor me check out the rewards that you'll get. There's nothing too massive, some discounts on Tindy and things like that, but it would mean a lot if you did because GitHub actually match sponsorships for the first year, so it's a really good return for me and hopefully you get something out of it too. That's it from me. If you want to keep up with what I'm up to, check out my Twitter or my Discord channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching.